Good morning or good afternoon. I guess we're right on the right on the cusp of that, aren't we? Okay, I'm going to drop in a few uh, links before we get started. I'm going to put in a link to my Amazon store, the link to my, <coughs> excuse me, to my um, Ooh La La shop is in the title. And I'm going to, hi Judy, I'm going to put in links for the tag bundles that are ready to go. Um, you don't have to rush to get the tags. I got thousands, so no rush there, okay? You can stay and enjoy the you can stay and enjoy the live. <laughs> Give me just a second. Just one second. Hi, Judy. Hi, Janelle. Okay, so I put a couple of links in there and uh, get my ducks in a row here. I had a last minute thought. I think we're going to do some feet embossing. Yes. In like a pretty, I have this color. It's like a pretty kind of a it's a champagne. They call it champagne. So I think we're going to do some of that. Still formulating in my head. Hi, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon, for sprinkling. Anybody who wants to sprinkle, feel free. I didn't know what that meant for the longest time. <laughs> Let me turn my heater down so I don't burst into flames. Okay. Oh, you guys, I'm very excited about this tag. And we're going to do Bodabra at the end. We're going to make a fabulous bow. This is actually going to be a tree ornament on a tag. So I'm excited about that. So what I've done is finished off the back of my tag already. And look at how nice this paper kind of picks up the colors of this tree. This is my very favorite transfer from Candy Cane Lane. And that's what that is from, Candy Cane Lane. And no, I'm sorry, I don't have any. Um, and I've been saving it for something special because <laughs> there's only one. Like this, look at that. So beautiful. Okay, so that's going to be our focal point. I've got some kind of scrapbook paper that kind of matches it. Thank you, Donnell. I appreciate that. Hi, Carol. So I finished off the back of the tag because that's always something that I have to do, you know, in the middle of everything. And it kind of irritates me. <laughs> so I've already done that. So here's my thought process so far. I'm going to do this. Okay. Then I'm going to do without the lines, no lines. I'm going to do this. Like this. I'm going to dry brush this so it's super, super faint. And then I'm going to stamp this in a stone gray just to give it some interest. No, I was going to stamp it in stone gray. This is the one that I'm going to do with the dry embossing in champagne. I think that'll be really pretty. So that's kind of where we're going. So right now I'm going to kind of, hi Brenda. I'm going to kind of um, just kind of get my base going here. I, I have to kind of um, figure out like my measurements. Okay, so if this goes there, and let me cut this off because I don't want any of the stripe. I just want the flower. So I was going to do hot wax seals. But I've already got so much going on here, and it was between hot wax seals and Bodabra and Bodabra one. <laughs> but I'll try to go live tomorrow and do a whole tutorial on hot wax seals because they are the bomb. And thank you, Shannon, for reminding me of that. 
I'd completely forgotten about them. You know, there's so many things. It's like, ugh, you can't keep it all in your brain. Okay, got a nice straight cut on that. That's a good piece of paper. I'm not going to throw that away. In fact, I have two of them. So I put one on the bottom as well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Leah, you made it. Hi, Cindy. Okay. So now I'm just, what's the word I'm looking for? Planning. I'm planning placement. This is going to go across the top. Okay. Just like that. All the way down like that. That's going to go across the top. This is going to meet this. Okay. Kind of bring it over to the side so I can see how much room I have left on everything when I'm planning things out. So this is going to go over the whole thing. This, we're going to dry brush this so the words are not quite as uh, prominent. That's going to be a little bit of interest there. We're going to do this in, uh, we're going to heat emboss it. And then my tree is going to go here. And then that leaves me lots of room for my bow. Okay, so that makes me happy. And I remembered to get out my stamping platform. I think that's what it's called. I can't remember what that thing's called. So let's, before we start gluing stuff down, there it is. Ink some stuff. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Laura from Tennessee. So I'm just gonna, you know, that drives me crazy. <laughs> it takes too long. I'm gonna do this. Just like that. Okay, so that's gonna go there, and I'm gonna center that. And maybe I think I'll do it like that. So a bow is going to go here and then I'm going to put a big uh, loop on it so it can either hang on the tree or it could hang on a doorknob or it could hang on, you know, I have a lot of um, amours in my house and I have something hanging from every handle on every amour that I have. It's a perfect place to hang things from or even just kitchen cabinets, you know, if you have a knob on your kitchen cabinet, hang it from there. All right. I have to make a decision, you guys. Hi, Sheila. So let's just knit, okay? I'm going to put this here. See how far down the glue has to go, right about there. I cut a bigger hole in my glue bottle because it was making me crazy. It was coming out like in the thinnest line. So I cut a bigger hole, so I like that better. I get instant gratification. All right, so I think probably centering this makes the most sense. And then I just kind of stand it up and tap it down like that so it's really straight across the top. See there? And then if you need to scooch it a bit, you can. Okay. This is going to be beautiful. I can see it in my head. I'm very excited about this. Take that off. This scrap of paper is quite thick and those scissors are quite dull. So I did not get a great there. These are my, my preferred scissors. Hi, Oliver. There we go. Okay, so we've got the top of our card is done, our tag. Now, my idea is to put this here. Yeah, I do like that idea. That's, that's what I'm going with. I thought about stamping the words, but I like the tone of this background, the beige. So instead of painting and stamping, this is it's actually easier. So... 
I'm going with easy. So I'm just going to mark my mark my paper where I need to cut. Come on. There we go. I always make the smallest little ticks and then I can't see them. I'm going to cut. I've already lost the one on this side of the paper. <laughs> what a nitwit. There it is. <laughs> I found it. Okay, so line it up with that little hole right there. Come over to right about there. came down there we go okay so we've got that that's going to get glued to that so far so good let me think I'm still thinking it's still a work in progress that's going to go there I'm going to fade out that lettering a bit I'm going to heat emboss in champagne there. My tree will go up there and I'll have a nice area. I may put more of this paper down here. We'll just have to see when we get to that part. Okay. Let's glue this down. Make sure your letters are going the right way, <laughs> not upside down, which I don't guess would be the end of the world, but. And this glue gives you a little bit of time to kind of slide things around and get them exactly where they need to be. So that's really pretty. That looks nice. Let's, no matter how good you cut it, there's always a little, little bit of trimming that needs to be done. I am massacring this thing. My goodness, that looks terrible, Victoria. First time with scissors? Oh, yeah, that's a little... That's a little, it's a little bit better, not much. Ah, man, oh man. Ugh. And you know what? I think, I think, I think, I think we're going to diamond dust some of this. I'm not sure what part of it we're going to diamond dust. We might diamond dust the roses on the transfer. But I feel like since it's Christmas, we might as well dig out the diamond dust, huh? Okay. All trimmed up. Hi, Aracellus. Thank you for sprinkling. I appreciate it. Okay, so <laughs> here we go. Now I want to fade this out because it's too like in your face. So I'm going to do that with paint and a brush. Not that brush. That brush is stiff as a board. I'll do it with this brush. So we need a piece of paper towel. So I don't want streaks when I dry brush. So I'm going to take a bunch, a bunch, a bunch off. And what I'll do is I'll start like here where I know the tree is going to be. So um, if it's not exactly what I want, it's not the end of the world. 
It's not anything. I have no paint on my brush. <laughs> Hold on. What happened was I don't have any paint on the inside of my brush. It was all on the outside and I wiped it all off. So now I'm just kind of working some paint into the bristles of my brush, which is what I need. There we go. Now let's see. Yeah, see, I want to do like that. Okay. The harder you push, I know I'm off now. Uh, here's one thing that you have to be aware of. If you finish the back of your card, you have to be aware of where your card sits because there, you know, you got paint on your table or glue or it makes a difference. Lots of things to keep track of. I'm going to see where my tree is going to go. So I'm going to make it kind of a little bit light, lighter there. See, I'm kind of making like a little tree shape that I'll kind of like that. You see, it's kind of shaped like a tree, just so it's not, uh, you know, so the words don't. The letters don't kind of come through so much. So the harder you push, the more paint's going to come out of your brush, but it's not going to come out streaky. It's going to come out just like a haze, which is what I want. Okay, see, so I've got that kind of really calmed down, which is exactly what I wanted. Hi, Shirlene. A stone wall jar. I don't know what that means, Shirley. What's that mean? The jar that I have my paint in? It's a bruschetta jar from uh, Trader Joe's. Okay. That's what I wanted, just kind of faded out. And, and then, of course, we're going to go over that with ink. I'm going to clean this off of my table because I don't want um, I don't want this to transfer to the back of my tag if it hasn't already. It may already be there. So if you're just getting here, this is Tag Along Tuesday. I'm Victoria from Old to Ulala Art. And every Tuesday, we do something with tags. And today we're making, this is actually going to be an ornament. Okay. Let's get out a little bit. So now I've got that. This is going to go here over this real white part. Oh, it's just going to be gorgeous. Let me put that on. And then this is going to go here. Right there like that. So I think we'll stamp this next. So I'm going to stamp because I want to make it, um, I want to heat emboss because I want a little bit of shine. So I'm going to stamp with Versamark ink. It's kind of a very sticky, clear ink. And I'm going to sprinkle my champagne colored, um, you can see the color of it here. It's really pretty. My champagne colored, uh, what's this called? Embossing powder on it. And um, this is a little, I don't know what, what it's called. I think it's called, a, I don't know what it's called. But if you go over the area that you're going to emboss on, it takes static electricity away and then your powder only sticks where your, what do you call this? Where your ink is. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so, ha, ah, look, I remembered. So I'm going to use this little guy, which I love, my stamping platform. I've been playing with him a lot. And what's nice is it's 7 by 7 but you see it's very, like you could put a 12 by 12 paper in here if you needed to because the edges are not closed in. So 
if I put that like that and make sure it's straight, these magnets are really, really strong. So I'll put a magnet there and a magnet there. And then I will I want to look at this from the side because I want to make sure I get it all the way to the top. That's where my stamp is going to go. Oh yeah, an anti-static bag. That's what it's for. But don't do it over dark paper because it'll leave like chalk marks. Yeah. Where can I get your clear stamp tool with magnets? Yvonne, I put a link at the very beginning of this um, to my Amazon shop. And there's a link in there where you can get this. And if you guys uh, purchase anything from me on Amazon, in my Amazon store, it doesn't cost you anything more but I get a few pennies and they add up. So I appreciate it. Hi, Dorothy from Arizona. Um, ooh, Aaron's a paper crafter trans <laughs> trespassing into the 3D crafting world. Girl, that's exactly what I am. I I am a paper crafter from way back in the scrapbooking days. I used to have a scrapbooking business and uh, paper is my first love. So my, uh, my tag along Tuesdays are very near and dear to my heart because I get to play with paper love paper so you're you're in good company Aaron oh I just can't really tell if that's straight but I'm just gonna have to go with it okay okay so then you close it okay so the stamp in there is face down you close it and now it sticks over here this thing is magical. I love this thing. How did that live so long? How did I have a scrapbooking business for years and not know about these things? <laughs> I didn't know about these things. Well, I knew about them, but I don't know. I don't know what. Yeah, you think that would, Erin, you think it would take that chalky stuff off, but I had some that just plain old stuck. Yeah, so yeah, I just... If I'm, if I'm going to heat emboss on a dark color paper, I just take my really like really super thin brush and brush off any parts that I don't want. And that works, you know, this is better, but all right. So here's our Versamark. It's just like ink. You can't really see it. Okay. So I'm just putting on, it's very gooey and sticky. So we're going to put that there. Then we know that we can just close this and press and get a nice impression. This will be really pretty. I really wanted this kind of lacy edge was what I was going for. You can't, geez, you really can't see it. I'm going to push it down again. And that's the beauty of this is you can go in and you can right here where this paper kind of meets. I want to make sure that I get a nice bit of ink there. And that's the beauty of this little gadget here is you can go over and over again. And uh, okay. And get the same impression, which is very cool. I've guesstimated that many a time. You guys see me do it. Re-ink re something. And most of the time it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so I'm going to put my... Hi, Tina. Shannon, there's just so much to have. A dryer sheet. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, a dryer sheet would work as well. So I'm going to sprinkle my powder here. Make sure it gets everywhere. I just kind of do this little tappy back and forth kind of thing. And then, oh, you guys look. A little, oh man, that worked out perfect. It's perfect across the top. Yay, us! And then I just put this all back in here with this little tray that's designed for that. You could also just fold a piece of paper in half and do it in paper. You know, fold the paper in half and then put it back in the little container that it came in. 
nets, blow dryers. Well, not really blow dry, heat emboss. Okay, here comes the market. Okay, so see how one side is shiny and the other isn't? Oh, how delicious is that? Never gets old. So you just hold your heat on it till everything turns that kind of different color. And look, oh, it's just so beautiful. It's almost tone on tone. It's just delicate and exactly what I wanted. The reveal never gets old. You're absolutely right, Erin. It never, ever gets old, ever. It's so fabulous. Oh, man, that's good. If you're new to this, do not touch that until it's completely dry. It dries pretty quick, but I have touched it before, like right after, and that will come off on your fingers and burn you. I got a little piece of paper that's coming loose down here. I'm going to fix that. So this does take a second to dry so you don't burn yourself. Okay, yeah, a beautiful sheen. You're absolutely correct. Okay, now, I'm of two thoughts here. I know for a fact that transfers can go right on paper and they adhere just fine. Oh, look how beautiful that's going to be. They adhere just fine, just right over paper. You know, your your first instinct is to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Seal this, because that's what they tell you, you know, with, with these, you got to seal it first, you know. Karine, that embossing powder um, is called Champagne, and it's by a company called Reflections, and I'll, I'll look for it and try to put it in my Amazon shop. I'm not sure I got it on Amazon, but if it's on Amazon, I'll put it in my shop, but it's called Champagne and it is a lovely color. It's kind of a mix, which it's kind of taupey. It's kind of a mix between uh, like a light gold. It's just lovely. It's my favorite embossing. The emboss, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Shannon. This here is from, I didn't even tell you guys. It's from the Adornment Stamp. It's a stamp of all like borders. And I've been using the heck out of it. And I really, really like it. You can find it in the shop. It's called Adornment. It's not winter adornment. It's just adornment. And it has just all kinds of, um, I'd love to show it to you. But I have no idea where it is. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> all right, let's continue. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to top coat this first. I may top coat it on the other side. I probably will top coat it on the other side. But right now I'm going to back you guys out because I need to do like the big hover to make sure. That, and I have to stand up to make sure that this is straight. All right. Yeah, it's a really good stamp, Brenda. I've been using it a lot. I, I make myself use my stamps. Oh, this makes me so happy. You see how fabulous that looks? I've been holding on to that, to this little piece, because I wanted it to. Do you have to clean the ink after using the sticky embossing ink? Yeah, I clean it with, um, you know, rubbing alcohol. I clean all my stamps with rubbing alcohol. Okay, so here's my transfer. It's just on the paper. I've not sealed the paper. Don't make yourself crazy. And I'll just begin to rub. Listen, you don't have to rub like your life depends on it with these transfers. I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make. You don't have to rub really hard. You have to get it started. Here's how I do a transfer. I get it started. I lift up a corner. Easier said than done. There it is. 
I lift up a corner like this. So I have my finger under here, under the corner, okay? And I rub and I just make sure that it's coming off. And there's no point in rubbing. I wanna show you. There's no point in rubbing where you've already rubbed. See, that's already adhered. So, and by lifting up as you go, you'll see that it's already down there. So you're not spending time rubbing on something that doesn't need to be rubbed on anymore. Okay. So that's all I'm doing here is I'm just rubbing, kind of lifting at the same time. Oh, I can't wait to make the bow for this. I have every color in this rose Christmas tree for a ribbon with some lace and oh, it's just gonna be lovely. And if you've lifted and you're like, oh, that little piece didn't go down, that's fine. Just lay it back down and rub a little bit more. Oh, 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 have you ever? Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it's really good. It's exactly where that piece needed to go. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Brenda, isn't it true? I used to rub like my life depended on it. It's like, yeah. And then sometimes you can't get them to come off because you're rubbing so hard. It's like, well, maybe I shouldn't rub as hard. And then I quit rubbing as hard and lo and behold, yeah. And then of course you burnish. I'm not really sure what side you burnish with. I think both sides work. If somebody knows the proper side, let me know. They both slip around and slide really well. So you're just burnishing, making sure all your edges are down. That is just an absolutely lovely application. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I still rub too hard. Yeah, you think that you need to rub hard, but you really don't. You really don't. Yeah. In fact, if you can't get it to come off, rub lighter and just peel that paper back and rub very, very light. It doesn't, doesn't take a lot of pressure to get that transfer off of there. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? The side without the grid lines. Yeah. Let me look. So the the matte side. So that's the matte side. That's the shiny side. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Without the grid lines. Okay. Oh, I'm still rubbing this. I know it's fine. Okay, so there's that. Now, let's... I'm going to put my little stamping platform over there. Now I have this beautiful paper that I could put down here. I think the first thing I'm going to do is, you guys know what's coming next, don't you? Bam. But I'm going to clean this off. And I think we're going to go with vintage photo. I think we're going to go, well, I don't know. Maybe we'll go with gray. Maybe we'll go with stone gray. Yeah, maybe we'll go with stone gray. But what do you do with your ring finger? Hope it is caught. Oh, you know what? Um, I left, I had a ring on and... I didn't realize that it was doing that. I've never really had that happen before. Like it's not happening on this hand. And um, yeah, it was quite sore. I actually changed rings the other day. I actually left my house and went somewhere. And um, yeah, so I'm like kind of like I got like a little breakout, which is not great. So I had to take my rings off. I don't know if something got up under there or I don't, I don't know what happened too far from my heart to kill me as my mom used to say okay look at look at all the 
ink that came off of there because I rarely clean this. I'll be very honest. You know, I just stamp over and over and over again with it. But I know if I'm going to go with a lighter color, if you put lighter color ink over black, it will reactivate the black. I've already had that happen to me before. So I want to make sure that this is nice and cleaned off. And you can see how rubbing alcohol is just the best. Just put it in these little Dollar Tree bottles. Plain old rubbing alcohol is all... Um, Oh, jump into the paper crafting, Sheila. It's so much fun. And that's why I'm doing the Tag Tuesdays, because we can still use all of our Iron Orchid stuff, but it's just another way to use it, you know? Okay. So that's, I've cleaned that off with rubbing alcohol. Plain old rubbing alcohol. Okay. Where are we at? So I'm thinking, do I want gray? Or do I want, I think I'm probably going to do vintage photo because I know I'm going to do my edges with vintage photo. And there's a lot of beige and kind of beige tones on this. So let's go with vintage photo. So I'm, I'm going to try and do it very, very light. So I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to see what it looks like before I commit. I'm just going to do it on another tag. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I would like that. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So that, and this is a really heavy part of the stamp, so I tend to use this side of the stamp more. So again, you can see I'm not putting it everywhere. I'm just kind of pouncing it on. Might even offload it again just real quick because I don't want it super heavy. And then I'm going to avoid my tree because I might sand that tree a little bit. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So I'm just going to kind of come in around and put. So look. Over here, I've got just some little dots and some little lines, and I don't have anything over here. And I've got the same thing down here. And it's just, you know, it's just not a lot, but it's just enough to add another layer of interest. Do you see that? Yeah, it makes things look old. I'm going to cover this with paper, so I don't know why I'm even doing it down there. And then you can take, if you didn't get enough, you can just take this little, don't even have to re-ink it, and kind of go around like that. I'm going to put in some, some more pieces. There. So that looks good. Okay. Mm, Denise, you moved. I saw your house on a Facebook. It's lovely. I would, I would not like to move. I don't want to move anymore. All right, let's think what we're going to do. So generally, I lightly sand my transfers because I think they look too pristine. So... That's what I'm going to do now. So I take a very, very soft, soft, soft sandpaper. Okay, this is very soft. This is, um, ah, don't you know? It's for extra fine finishes. It says something 20, 320. It's 320, so it's very, very fine. And I'll even go like this to kind of wear it down a little bit because it feels kind of new. And then I'm just going to go in one direction really, really slow, okay? Because you can't put it back on. So I'm just going to go in one direction and just look. See here where I'm getting a little bit of, a little bit of white coming through? That's what I want. It's subtle, but... Oh, I got a little heavy handed there. You've got to work slow and you've got to be very aware that you can't put it back on. Okay, that's all I'm going to take off. So do you see how I've got a little bit of interest there? That's all I'm doing. That's it. Now I am going to ink my sides. I always start with this and I end up just going right to the, 
But let's see if we just do this, what happens. It's just beautiful. I don't know what I'm going to do down here at the bottom yet, so I'm going to go ahead and ink it up because I don't know what I'm going to do. I might put some paper there. I just really haven't even decided yet. So that's in depth. That looks amazing. But, you know, still like to do this. Just really like to define it. And I like to kind of come into my corners. I think that looks really cool. So we'll just do that. And I think, well, I don't think, I pretty much know that I'm going to put some glitter on this. I'm not sure where. I'm going to go in here because it looks very kind of light back in there and I'm just going to pop in a little bit of ink just because that's looking a little just like that just like that oh this is just turning out so pretty I'm so so happy so let's talk about Dorothy, will you send me your new address, please, while I'm thinking of it? Yeah, this is really pretty. So I've got all these little things here. I've got beautiful little bows. I've got some pearls. I've got some buttons. That might be a thing that we do. My first instinct is to put, well, maybe not my first instinct, but I thought about it is to put some paper here, because I like that. I like that color too. That's the color that's on the back. But here, here's, all my, here's all my ribbon that we're gonna make a bow out of. So I think what we'll do is we'll make our bow first, and then we'll see how the bow looks just on this plane. It might hold its own or if it needs like more of a colorful backdrop, okay? And then we're gonna add a, a pretty bow up here and then we're gonna add a hanger so this can hang on the tree or a doorknob or on the knob of your amoir or wherever, wherever. Okay, let's make a bow. Bow Dabra. Here it is, love this little thing. It's in the Amazon shop. And I saw the price came down. They were really pricey for a while. And I just I just re-added it to my Amazon store so you didn't have to search for it. And um, I could emboss the bottom. Thank you, Robin, for bringing that up. And let's let's keep that in mind. That, that might be a nice look to kind of peek out behind the bow. Here, my thought on that. My bows generally get really big. And that's why I left so much room down here because the bow is going to take up a lot of this. So whatever we put down here may not even show. Okay. So, you know, it might be kind of redundant to put that down there because it may not even show. So we'll just see. That's why we're going to, that's why we're going to make the, um, I'll put this here so we can look at it. That's why we're going to make the bow first. Okay. Bow Dabra 101. The first thing you need is... Bodabra has two parts. It has this little part and it has this little part. The first thing you need is something to tie your string with. And I usually try to use like the thinnest little something that I have. This is very thin, very gossamer like. So <laughs> I never remember which way this goes. Okay. So the, let me look at the box again. It's been a while. Okay, so you first have to put a string or something. Sometimes, depending on what my depending on what my bow is going to look like, I I've used twine, I've used embroidery floss, I've used all kinds of things through the middle of this. I'm going to use this very thin sheer ribbon. Okay, and that's what you're going to tie the whole thing off with. All right, I'm going to tie the whole thing off with that. Oh, bad internet. I'm sorry, doll. 
Oh, I'm so glad to hear that, Dorothy. Ugh, I was sweating that. Very glad to hear that, Dorothy. Yay, post office. Because I could see last night when I looked at it, it had already made it to Wilcox. So there, I don't think at that point there's anything I could have done about it. But whew, we dodged a bullet on that one, huh? Okay. Um, I lost my train of thought. Okay. I do want to mention this while I'm thinking of it because I'll forget. Okay. So Tag Along Tuesday, we use tags. Tags, if you don't buy a thousand at a time, are are kind of hard to find. I know they are because I've tried to find them and, and they're difficult to find. So what I did is I bought, I'm not even going to tell you how many tags I have, a thousands of tags. I bought eight by four tags, which is what we're using today. I bought six and a quarter by three and an eighth, which is what I use most of the time. And then I bought these little guys. They're kind of like two by four. What are they? Two and two and a quarter by one, two, three, four, by like four and a half. But I love the little scallop tops on them. So these would be cute because we can like tuck them into places on other tags. So I've bought all of these. I've put them in bundles. You can buy a bundle like this. I, I can't remember how much. I, I think there's 10 of these, two of these, and two of these. Or you can buy just 20 of this most popular size. There's two offerings there in my shop, okay? And they're there right now. You don't have to go right now because I have thousands of them. But they're priced very, very reasonably. And this is a way for you to be able to tag along with me on Tuesdays. Um, and you'll have tags, okay? So I've done that. I told you I'd do it, and I did it. I followed through with that. Um, I will mention this. The stamp I used, honey, is... Um, the stamp I used is from... <laughs> we're all over the place, you guys. Is from. It's called Adornment, and it's just a bunch of border stamps. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah, it's really pretty. It's in my shop, the oolalashop.com. Dorothy, make sure you update your address because I have something I want to send you, honey. Okay. Back to the Bodabra. Let's put this here so I can look at my beautiful. I have one piece of lace that I really want to. This piece of lace definitely has to be there. And eyelash yarn. You definitely have to have eyelash yarn because that makes everything better. So I've got pink, green, and white eyelash yarn. And I've got all of these different colors of... So let's just start. Okay, so here's how you build it. You want your tail. So my tail will be about that long, okay? And then you do, this is super easy, you guys. You do a loop, okay? A loop here, however big you want your loop. You're deciding on the size of your bow right now. That's about right. Okay, so a loop there and a loop here, similar in size, okay? And then your tail, and then you can cut that off. That's your first little, little bow is in there, okay? Oh, you found a measure in a Dollar Tree, cool. Hi, Diana. I hope I'm saying that right, Diana, okay. Um, so I like that color. I love this color because look, it pulls in those kind of tones there. So let's also do a bit of this. So you're really just stacking these on top of each other. I'm going to show you when I get this one in that you can kind of arrange them so they're not like right, right on top of each other. I don't really worry about the ends too much. I take care of the ends after, but like I can pull this one kind of up to the top and make this one kind of come down to the bottom. See what I'm doing here? Like that. You can do that. And then this little guy, when you start getting a lot of bows in here, you can, you can or a ribbon, you can take this and you can mush everything down. 
and it gives you like a really nice, and then you can kind of see what you need to adjust. If you need to pull this out or that out, but see how that's already making a really cool bow. Okay. I like this green, happy with this green color. So we'll do some of this and that's it. You're just doing this over and over again. It's all there is to it. It's not, not rocket science. It's really fun. It's really fun. And it's a nice way to add a little extra something to, you know, a project, but whatever you're doing, I add it to my tags. So we'll do that green. Let's, hi, Anna. Let's make sure we get our eyelash yarn in there. And then my lace too. Ugh, love my lace. You know what? I think I'm going to put, let's see what happens here. I don't think this lace has enough bump for a, let's use this lace for a tail. You know what I mean? So let's use this lace right here. And then after you get this out of here, you can judge the little bunny ears all around the way you want them to. Okay. That's kind of thick. It's that cotton ribbon. I'm going to put another... I'm going to put another bit of pink on top of that. I think I might use crinkle ribbon. Let me just look and see. Or should I put more? No, I think I'll use crinkle ribbon. Let's put some eyelash on first. I'll do a little bit of eyelash yarn. Again, just making a bow shape, just like that. Just like that. This is going to be pretty. Let's put some green. It's kind of Grinch green, but I think we can make it work. That piece was cut off just exactly the length I needed it. Yay! Okay, so I'm going to go like that, squish that all down. Then I'm going to use my crinkle ribbon. This is, you know, seam binding. You get it wet and it crinkles. Make a bunny ear. Make a bunny ear. That's a bit big of a bunny ear there. That looks good. that down. <laughs> I have this big table and I work in a little tiny space. I get further and further back. And now let's put some white. Before I use my eyelash yarn, I'll take it and I'll pull it backwards and look how it just makes it go crazy. So that's a good thing to do. It makes it really fluffy. There's that. So now I can kind of put this here and see what my first thought is that this really good color, this kind of peachy color is very, very hidden. So I'm not sure that I like that. I feel like that needs to be more prominent. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my last two that I did. And you can do that. Pull it right out. Well, <laughs> it'd be easier if you took this out. Okay. And I'm going to put another piece of this in because I think it's really, I think it grounds the piece very nicely. And it's just really kind of hidden back there. I could probably zhuzh it around so it would show more, but I'm going to take the safer out and do it like this. 
and then I'll put these guys back in. Put the pink. And I'll put the white. And then our eyelash. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, that's better. That's better. That was the right thing to do. Okay, so then I push this down real hard. Get everything kind of compressed. And then these little things that I strung through this way, I pulled them up like this. This little ribbon that you put needs to be pretty strong because you're going to have to pull pretty tightly on this. And now, see, that goes right down in that center, and that's going to tie this off into a fabulous bow. Now you can just grab one side of it and pull it out. Bam. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. Let's see what we, if we're on the right track. Oh, yeah, totally on the right track. Totally on the right track. Okay, that's a lot of bow. It's a lot of bow. It's very, um, very boofy. Yeah, Christina, all you do is um, it needs to be 100% rayon seam binding, and you spray it with water and crumble it up in your hand and just let it dry. And then if it's too crumbled for how you want to use it, uh, spritz it down again and flatten it out to make it however you want it. Yep. I just missed mine and kind of roll it up in my hand. All right. So this is quite, quite the bow. Let's see what we're looking at here. So see, and that's why I left so much room down there. I don't think anything behind there is going to show. I don't, it's not that I don't think it's going to show. I know it's not going to show. So I'm not putting anything behind there. I think I'm going to use this color to put a hanger on, up here. So I really like this color. I like how it picks up the colors here. Don't let me forget my diamond dust. I want to diamond dust this thing. Put that there. Yeah, Etsy's a good place for it. Absolutely. Um, thinking, thinking, thinking. I'm just thinking. See, here's a perfect example, Christina, what I'm talking about, seam binding. Like this seam binding is not really laying the way I want it to. So I'm going to take my spray bottle. I'm going to kind of isolate it a little bit and get it off my tag. I don't want to get my tag. And I'm going to give it a little spritz and just kind of make it wet again. And then I can make it go into the shape that I want it to be. I want it, see, I want it more like that. Yeah, so you can definitely re-wet your, uh, your crinkle ribbon over and over again, however you, you know, much like, I, and I know you've seen me do this, much the way you do sorry silk. You know, you can spritz sorry silk and get it to lay flat, you know, and not all crinkled up. I do that all the time because I like to use sorry silk for bows. So, okay. Oh, that looks good. That looks really good. I'm really, really happy with it. Okay. So I got to think about diamond dust. I'm definitely going to diamond dust. I think these roses... And these roses up here, I'm going to put a little hanger up here. I thought I was going to put a bow here, but I just, I'm not, I'm not sure that that's going to happen. Maybe I'll just put, yeah, maybe I'll just put a little, uh, I really wanted to use those pearls. <laughs> I want to throw everything at this. Maybe I'll just do a little bow like this and put a little pearl in the middle of it for up there. And then it'll hang from a thing like that could be on a tree or something. So this turned out just magnificent. I'm very happy with it. I am going to take it and try to make it a little more flat because it's very, hi Robin, it's very um, poofy. <laughs> it's very, very poofy. So there, we'll just do that. 
And, you know, I've got a little area there that I can, I have not tied this in a knot and I better do that because I can already see this starting to get loose. So where's the other end of that? Yeah, let me always tie your, the one that's, you know, making it a bow, always tie that in a knot. And then you can just pull those strings down into your tails like that. Okay. So that looks really, really nice. I feel like it needs something right there. Okay, listen, you guys, tomorrow, my plan, and I I discovered this a while ago, and I promised you guys a live, and I never did do it. So we're going to do it tomorrow. What did you put in the Bodabra to use to tie the bow? Just, um, just you can put anything you want in it. Uh, you can put twine, you can put embroidery floss. Um, the only part of that's going to show is the tail part of it. I just used a really sheer ribbon to, to tie it off, and then it just becomes part of the tail. So, <laughs> okay. These are, uh, we're going down a rabbit hole, you guys. Who's got time for a rabbit hole? These are, hot wax seals and you make them not hot wax i'm sorry hot glue seals and you make them with you know those seals like you seal a letter with but you use them with hot glue and i have a whole process to show you how to do this and what i'm thinking is i'm going to take a piece of this paper one of these flowers i'm going to make a round Thing like this and I'm going to put it in the middle of this bow down here. That's what I'm going to do. But it's a process. It takes a bit. Um, I do like the mini bow dabra because I do small stuff, Robin. So yeah, I don't need that big honking thing. I'm, I'm never, never going to make anything that big. So yes, the mini bow dabra for me is perfectly fine. And it's in my Amazon shop, sweetie, if you want to throw me a couple pennies. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make one of these off camera to finish this. But I'm going to come back tomorrow and we're going to do an entire live on this process. It's super fun. It's easier than you think it is. And it just adds like a really cool, unexpected element to your stuff. Okay. So I'm going to have something that looks something like that that I'm going to put in the middle of that bow. Okay. So that's going to go like that. Let's tie this. Are the embossing things in your Amazon shop? Donnell, um, everything's in my Amazon shop, honey. If you can't find it, let me know. And I, I'm pretty sure everything's in there. I, I try to stay on top of that. Um, I know like all the, in fact, I think I have a separate category for embossing, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken. I have to keep track of it. <laughs> oh, hi, Sandy. <laughs> I sensed you were there, Sandy. So we'll do that up there. And then I'm thinking we'll put this little hanger here. So is it weird that the hanger's in a different color? No, I don't think so. I don't think that's weird at all. And I really want to put a pearl on that. Or maybe a button. You know, buttons are always so good. Maybe a button. Maybe I'll put a button there. And then I'm going to make a custom hot glue seal with one of these flowers in it to go here on top of our bow. So that's really kind of where, where I think we're going to stop because I have to fashion something for the front of this bow. And see, we were right that you're not going to see anything behind there. So it doesn't make any sense. Um, oh, yeah, uh, Deanna, I've, I've made many, many, many of them. And there's there's a couple of different things that you could don't forget the diamond glitter. Thank you so much, Shannon. I was going to forget it. Let's do it right now. I put on diamond dust with Mod Podge and just a little brush. So we're going to do that right now. 
I can find a little brush. So I, I feel like these need a little bit of something, something. Just because it's Christmas, you know, why not? Why not? A little bit of glitter. Okay. So this I'm going to attach here with a matching, you know, I'll have a bow here with, I don't know, either pearls or something, something here with a hanger so it can hang on a tree. And then this is going to be, I'll judge these all around so they're just really fabulous. So that's going to be my, my bow at the bottom. I love the colors how they pick up all the colors in the tree. It's really, really pretty. That's going to be very, very pretty. And I'll make these all, you know, match at the bottom. Um, let's put some glitter on this. Why not? Okay. So I'm just going to take a little bit of Mod Podge. Okay, Nancy. Tune in tomorrow. We're going to do something new and different tomorrow. Here's how I do diamond dust. People probably do it differently. I'm going to take and put a little bit of Mod Podge on some of these roses. Just like that. Whoops. <laughs> Off camera. Just like that. Can I get them all? Okay, just like that. And I'm going to pour a little diamond dust out on here. Oh, look how pretty that looks. I wish it would show up in pictures. And then I'm just going to do this, move it around, run it over the. And there we go. It's just a bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so pretty. So, so pretty. Let's see. Yeah. There it is. Really pretty. Just a little something, you know? Okay. I feel like I also want to make sure that I got all of the roses that I wanted to get. I don't think I got this guy down here. I'll put a little bit on the bow, too, because why not? I think I've got this guy right here. This guy looks naked. Okay, so we'll put a little bit more on there. There we go. Really pretty. And then I'm going to put it on these up here too for, uh, for balance, you know. Oh no, Nancy. Nancy. <laughs> Girl, I miss yoga. All right. Medical update. I hate when people talk about medical stuff, but you guys have been on this journey with me. So you guys know that I broke my back about seven years ago. And then last year I had a pretty devastating fall in my house of all places and really like broke a couple of ribs, broke some more vertebrae in my back. And I have been struggling to make it back from that. And every doctor that I go to wants to operate on me. And I don't want an operation on my back. That is not something that I'm going to do ever. And so I went to a specialist here in town. It's hard to get into. Thank you, Jack. Jack, like, beat the bushes and got me in to see him. And we went to see him yesterday. And he was wonderful. And he said, listen, he says, anybody that tells you that you need surgery right now he said, is crazy. He said, you don't need surgery right now. And he's a surgeon. So it's not like, you know, like he, you know, he's a surgeon. And he says, no, no, you don't need surgery. What you do need is some physical therapy to strengthen your core and to strengthen your back muscles. So you don't hurt so much, you know, you need to make things stronger. So I was super, super, I feel very optimistic about things for the first time in a long time. And, um, so I can do that. And then I'll just tell you a funny story. So then we're, we're sitting there talking and he says, so, you know, you can go to physical therapy. And, and the first thing I thought was, oh my God, I have to leave my house by myself. 
And when I tell you I made a complete fool of myself and I burst into tears <laughs> in the doctor's office, my husband's like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, I can't, I can't even think about leaving the house by myself. How am I going to go to physical therapy with no one to help me and blah, blah, blah. My husband's like, okay, you're putting the, you know, the horse before the, the cart before the horse, just slow down, you know? And <laughs> my doctor, so funny. He says, well, I hope you don't take offense to this, but I, I think you might need a little mental therapy. <laughs> he says, I think you're suffering from a little PTSD from that ball. <laughs> <laughs> which made me now I'm laughing and crying at the same time and my husband's yeah I think she is too because like she won't leave the house and she's afraid to do anything and yeah so evidently that's what I'm going to do too <laughs> I'm going to do two kinds of therapy but I, I but I feel optimistic and I'm very very happy that that I have a, a game plan look at those glittery roses that was the perfect thing to do there so anyway that's my medical saga up to this point so we're gonna put this here we're gonna make a fabulous little center for it yeah really really pretty all right you guys i think that this is really blurry hmm, not so blurry okay so let's let's recap <laughs> It's all finished on the back and everything. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Shannon, I feel very optimistic for the very first time in a long time. And yeah, she lived PTSD. It sounds like, you know, like something, you know, like, I mean, I don't know a lot about it, but the only time I've ever heard it referred to is like people that have like been in war or been like in a, like a horrible, you know, victim of a crime or something, you know, but um that was a devastating fall that I took. I went down all, all of my weight on the, on the side. I hit my head. I got a black eye. I broke a couple ribs. I mean, it was like, it broke some vertebrae in my back. It was hard. I went down like a ton of bricks and it was devastating. Like I still go in that bathroom and I think about it every time I walk in there. So yeah, kind of messes with your brain a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'll, I'll give it a try. I'll, I'll, I'll go do some therapy and see if I can't, you know, um, my husband is on vacation again. My husband gets more vacations, uh, the week before Christmas. So I've already called and made some therapy appointments, physical therapy appointments. And he said he would go with me so I can leave the house. And, um, I told the doctor, he says, what are you afraid of about leaving your house? And I, I'm crying. And I said, I'm afraid that I'm going to fall in the parking lot between two cars and no one will ever find me. <laughs> he says, oh, honey, that's not normal. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. So anyway. Oh, well, thank you, you guys. Thanks for being a. Um, Thanks for being supportive. I really appreciate it. Again, like I said, I don't like to yeah, go on and on, but I'll just give you a little update, a little ladybug update on the on my medical thing. Because, you know, it kept me for, I didn't really get back into the groove till about April. You know, I, I, I took months off because I, I couldn't do anything. So I'm glad to be back at it. And I'm glad that you all stuck around for me. And yeah, I really want to put a pearl there, but I don't know if that'll work. So anyway, that's our tag for today. I'm going to make the center for this. And I'm going to um, get a beautiful picture. And I will post it for inspiration in case you need to refer back. And tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to make these. These are And these are not my best ones. These are just some that didn't, <laughs> that really didn't make the final cut. And um, I have some, like, I, I use them in journals a lot. And they're just, they're very, very cool. These don't, these are not a good representation of what they really look like. They're much more fabulous than this. Okay. Yeah, we could all use some mental therapy. Isn't that the truth? Boy, Jamie, I'm with you on that. Girl, I just never know what's going to happen out there, you know? And you hear all these terrible stories about things that happen to people and they're just out. I mean, they're not even doing anything. They're just outside, you know, and something weird happens to you. You know, you get caught up in somebody else's, you know, 
craziness and yeah yeah it's no bueno my husband works in a, a very um busy casino a five-star casino here in las vegas and he's surrounded by thousands and thousands of people every day and i'm like doesn't that like work your nerves it's like you know i'm just i'm so used to it you know and, and you know i worked in that industry for a long time i was a bartender for a long time and but it was different it was a different time times are different now times are to me they feel a bit scarier i don't know how any of y'all feel but that's kind of how i feel i feel like things are a little bit scarier so anyway that's how that goes i'm rambling that means i need to go there's my card. It's beautiful. It's finished on the back. I'll give it some ink on the back. Look at that sparkle. I wish I could get that sparkle. We did some. This is um, from the Adornments stamp. It's a stamp full of borders. It's beautiful. This is from Candy Cane Lane. And no, I'm sorry, I don't have any. And uh, we made the bow with the Bodabra. Everything's in the Amazon store. There's a link in the... Uh, in the beginning of this and um thank you guys for hanging out with me i appreciate it so tomorrow we'll do look i'm going to show you i got it all right here because i thought we could do it but like i said i i could do the bow or i could do this so i decided to do so this is the stuff that we need for we well, don't need it's nice to have this is the stuff that we'll use look at that it's a bee it's so fabulous um, this is a plain one to, I'll show you what you do with that. That has a very specific use. There's roses. You put the hot glue on this pad here and then it just comes right off. And then I have a kit that has, um, all different, um, wait here. You'll appreciate this. Look crown. Yeah. So this will be fun. We'll do this tomorrow. Okay. You guys will just spend an hour and play with hot glue stamps. Hot glue stamps, hot glue seals, I think you want to call them. All right, you guys. And it'll probably be around the same time, around noonish. I'll try to give you a heads up. You know me, I just pop on. I gotta, I gotta strike while the iron's hot. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks for hanging. Um Amazon store if you need anything, the oolalashop.com. I've still got puppies and kitty Christmas on sale, four dollars off. Heavenly stamp, five dollars off. All inlays 20% off. Okay. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Uh -huh, thank you, Christina. Yeah, it, it's going to take more net to keep me down, mainly because, and you guys know this because you're, I know you're exactly the same way. I can't not do this. You can't not do this. I have to do this. I have to. It's like a compulsion. I think about it all the time. Look, here's the little flower I'm going to make the hot glue thing out of it's a compulsion i think about it all the time i wanted to mention again i know i'm going on and on i have the tag bundles in okay you can get the tag bundles two of the eight by four how many of these i can't remember they're in my shop the ulala shop.com so i have a set of the three sizes and then I have a set of just the six by four, which I use the most, but I, I'll give you, a, you know, and I have tons of them. So don't worry about it. Everybody's going to get some. Listen, I will say this and it's just the way it is. You guys, I only ship priority and I do that to protect both of us. You know, the post office is notoriously un, uh, <laughs> unreliable. And I, I, as a small business owner, cannot afford to pay for packages that go missing. So we have to have a way to be able to trace them. So that's the only way that I ship is priority mail. So my suggestion um, is to pick up a mold or pick up a stamp if you're gonna get the tags or pick up an inlay for 20% off and make the shipping work for you, okay? That is it. Hi, Virginia. Yeah, do replay, baby. Okay, ladybugs, I'll see you manana. Bye.